In the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating our first movie clip button. Now, it's going to be very important that you reference the DME website for the structure that we're going to be using because we're going to be using this exact structure for the buttons that we create and we're also going to be using this exact code. So I've already got it there for you. Um, you just have to go and, and reference it. Anyway, um, talking about the structure first, what's going to be very important is that we're going to be creating movie clips instead of buttons and we're going to be putting all of the stuff inside the movie clip itself. So um, this structure will actually not be on the main timeline, but will be inside the timeline of the movie clip. And you'll see that it has three different sections, the start section, an over section, and an out section. The start section is the initial starting look of that button. And it's really not important that we have this section um, labeled or anything, because all we're doing is stopping that animation from running as soon as we start um, that timeline. So you, usually I don't put anything here, I just put a stop action. Um, the only thing that is really required is the over animation that stops at the end of that, and then the out animation that stops at the end of that. So um, we actually have only two different looks to this animation. We have what the animation or what the background and dynamic text look like initially, and when they start the rollover, and then what they look like at the end of the rollover, and then going back to its original starting look. So let's begin by opening up the Movie Clips button start file, and we're going to be um, creating our first button here in the very top section. So we need to first grab our rectangle tool, or you can use the rectangle primitive tool, whichever you like. I'm going to be using a shape tween for the very first button that we create. And you need to be aware of, of what kind of strokes and fills you have set at first, of course, because they will um, determine, you know, basic look of your button possibly. And so I'm going to use just a very generic, you know, light blue for right now, um, or medium blue, because I'll probably put white text on it at some point. But I'm going to go ahead and create the shape of my button. And there it is. And now I need to go to the black arrow, select all of it, turn it into a symbol, and this is going to be our sample MC button. Let's make sure that it is a movie clip. Now we're going to double click on it to go inside the timeline of it. Now we're going to create the basic structure that we need. So I'm going to make sure that this layer is going to be the background layer. The next layer on top is going to be my um, dynamic text. And the next layer above that will be my labels. Now it doesn't necessarily matter if you create all these um, layers first before you do any of this structure because um, all that matters is that you have this exact structure when you are complete with the work because it, that's all that really matters. Anyway, I'm going to create this structure fairly quickly just by selecting all three frames and then using the Alt key and dragging them out to frame 5, out to frame 15, and out to frame 25. Now, um, the initial look is that first label, that's that first section, and I don't really need to give it any sort of property. Um, so I'm going to go to the properties here. I don't really need to give it a frame label, but at frame 5 and at frame 15, I do need labels. So at frame 5, I'm going to call this the over section, and at frame 15, I'm going to call that the out section. Now you'll notice at the end of that I have an extra keyframe, and that's good because we're going to be using that to create our first stop action. So I'm going to go ahead and, and type in my actions here stop and I've made sure that I've clicked on that keyframe and you'll see that it has a little A there. Now that stop is going to be three places. It's going to be at the very beginning, at the end of the over animation, and at the end of the out animation. So I've already got it at the end of the out animation and now I just need to duplicate it with the alt drag method to the beginning and then the end of each section. So that means that the initial start it will be stopped then when I roll over it, it will play the rollover, the over section, the over animation, and then it will play the out animation. So let's create um, this animation. Um, at the out state, it's going to be looking different. So I'm going to go ahead and change my colors here 
you'll see now I've, I've kind of gone to from a blue to a green, so it's a pretty obvious change. But you'll notice that this over animation stops right here. That's why we have these duplicate keyframes. The reason why is we need to duplicate the two keyframes so we have that look when it stopped and then we start the animation again starting at frame 15. So these are duplicate keyframes and then these three keyframes are duplicates of each other as well. Now we can create the tween in between our two um, animated sections. So I'm going to use shape tweens in this case. So there's my shape tween. And you'll notice that my dynamic text also have these um, labels or these different sections, and I'm not going to need that for right now. So let's go ahead and select through that, right click and choose clear keyframes because we're going to have static dynamic text, meaning it's not going to animate at first when we create this. Now, the only thing else that we need to make this actually look like an animated button is the code to make it animate. So I'm going to create a new layer that will be called actions not a bad idea to lock that layer and let's copy in the code to actually make it work and I want to describe this code as well so I'm going to copy in that code go to the actions layer go to my actions panel and paste now the very first um, bit you'll see of course that's gray these are comments um, this first one this dot button mode dot equals true what this does is set it so that when you roll over this movie clip, you'll get the hand tool. So it changes that movie clip from a, a typical movie clip into a button, basically. The next thing is this dot mouse children equals false. That makes it so that the rollover that we're doing won't happen um, when we are over other children of this um, object. Because we are actually attaching the, the code to this, which is the timeline of the button or of this movie clip, and we don't want it to actually make um, this become something else by when we roll over it. So anyway, um, this is something, this dot mouse children equals false is something we can discuss more if needed. Um, this function, uh, the next thing here is the two functions that we need for the rollover and the rollout. So we have this dot go to and play over, this dot go to and play out, and this of course is the timeline that we're currently on. And then this dot add event listener for the rollover, which runs the rollover function, and this dot add event listener rollout, which adds the rollout function. So we can now save our work. So go ahead and save this, of course, removing the start when you're done with yours, and go ahead and test with control enter. And you should now see that we have a movie clip that acts as a button with an animation. So that's pretty exciting. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to add some dynamic text and show you how we can change that. And then we're also going to animate it using a movie clip um, instead of shape tween so that we can do things like um, add drop shadows and stuff to our animations. And that'll be in the next tutorial. So go on.